Good afternoon. My name is Andrew Anglin, and my rhetorical situation is that I'm from Old Miss Marketing, and you are the Old Miss Administration. There's a freeze warning in effect for the state of Mississippi. <laughs> the most recent freshman class numbers have been record setting, and the Forward Together campaign has garnered immense amounts of donations for the purpose of updating our athletic facilities. There is no better time than the present to be a rebel at the University of Mississippi. With all of these changes that we've seen, there have been a few controversial ones. Probably the most controversial has been changing the beloved mascot, Colonel Reb, in favor of Rebel the Black Bear. Now I know this is a very, very sensitive subject. So the proposed project I would recommend not be started for at least three years. But I fully believe that Rebel the Black Bear can be integrated into the Ole Miss family. And the way to do that is by continuing the current marketing efforts towards children, but going further out into families. Now how do we do that? Rebel's Creamery Cave. Rebel's Creamery Cave is a highly themed and unique dessert experience designed for all members of the family. The location and the contents inside would be reminiscent of a bear cave mixed with a country nostalgic design. So when you walk in, all the furniture and the counter will be tree bark. The lighting fixtures will be old-fashioned lanterns. And even the floor would have all bear scratches in the wood. Adorning the walls would be pictures depicting Rebel the Black Bear's origin story and how he became such an avid fan of Ole Miss. I am currently authoring a children's story that goes into this origin of Rebel. Believe that that is what is really missing from the current marketing campaign. When you have a backstory, it gives more accessibility, more credibility, and a little bit more interest in the character or the brand. And again, by having a children's story targeting the group of the family that really drives that market, which are children. Now, to get to the delectable desserts, I'm gonna follow the Cold Stone Creamery model. So we're gonna have basic flavors enhanced with mixins. Some of the basic creations, the Rebel Black Bear. Dark chocolate ice cream with gummy bears and rich chocolate swirl. The Polar Bear, peppermint ice cream, York peppermint patties and rich chocolate swirl. We'll also have Sundays, of course for the kids, the Teddy Bear. Have a traditional banana split called the Hottie Toddy but when the staff serves it, they have to lead the whole store in the chant. <laughs> and then, of course, the ultimate colossal challenge entitled The Colonel. Six scoops of ice cream, 14 toppings, all served in a large silver hat reminiscent of Colonel Reb. I believe using his imagery in this one instance would be a good blend of our past and our future and hopefully it can help ease a little bit of the controversy that has been created. Also, we'd have exclusive merchandise sold at Rebel's Creamery Cave. For obvious reasons, there is not a lot of merchandise currently out there of Rebel the Black Bear. So by really focusing on his image in terms of the dessert location, it would be an easier avenue to try to follow to get some of that out there. And of course, it helps marketing, it helps branding. We'll also have those great reusable plastic cups, which are an, is an Oxford tradition, to help our marketing and our branding. Now, looking at costs and revenue, using Cold Stone again as an example, the initial cost to open a single franchise location is $250,000 to $400,000. That includes equipment, inventory, certifications, amongst other expenses. 
And on average, each cold stone will bring in $382,000 per year. And I think with having it on a college campus, you can easily duplicate that, if not go further. For location, you want to have it in the student union building. It's a hub of traffic, students, faculty, alumni, but also when families come, they'll be here on the campus. They'll remember those good times, those memories, and they'll see how beautiful it is at Ole Miss. And in the future, they'll want to come back. And they can go to our bookstore, and then hopefully those kids will attend the university. Also, the subway that is currently in the Student Union Center is the number one grossing subway in the nation in terms of sales. That is a great fact to know when opening up anything in a student union building, especially here at Ole Miss. The tradition of going for ice cream with your family is held by many. I remember going to Applegate Farms every two Fridays or so as I got older, probably every Friday, because I'm feeling the effects right now a little bit. And I know that many Southern families have had the tradition of making their own homemade ice cream. But as time becomes of the essence, people get busier, it's starting to wane. Oxford is a perfect example. In the last two years, we've seen four dessert locations open up. Bops, which specializes in frozen custard. Yaya's and Twisties, which specializes in frozen yogurt. And Holly Sweet Tooth, which specializes in candy, even though they have a limited selection of ice cream. So competitively speaking, there's an opportunity for an ice cream place here in Oxford. The purpose of Rebels Creamery Cave is not to eradicate the traditions that we have loved as members of the Ole Miss family. It is to extend our brand, to appeal to generations of future rebels who will continue to grow up loving Ole Miss. Let's not waste this opportunity. Let's embrace what the future holds. And most importantly, let us remember that we are the Ole Miss rebel family. Thank you.